This is uh, Kaywin here. Oh, hi, uh, Kaywin. Apologies on behalf of Sutik as well. He's held out a little bit in the uh, conference and he'll be joining us as soon as possible. Today is our honor to have Dr. Park Tu Wu join us uh, from Korea <laughs> yes. and Dr. Kang to help us with the interpretation uh, uh, uh. of the IVAS as well. Uh, without further ado, we have a left main challenging case today to discuss lots of discussion points and I will switch over to the uh, history. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have the history slides presented. Okay, so we have an 83-year-old lady with risk factors of hypertension and dyslipidemia. And uh, she has a significant history of needing a pacemaker with a high-grade AV block about nine years ago. This year, uh, no, sorry, last year, November, she came in with non s elevation MI. Ejection fraction was found to be low at 35%, and angiogram showed triple vessel disease, very calcified, diffuse. She declined a bypass because of her age and was given at least moderate to high risk for bypass. Subsequently, she underwent uh, stenting to the RCA using Onyx 2.5 by 34 to the RCA as well as drug-eluting balloon to the distal aspect of the RCA and RPDA. So this is the ECG that you see. You can see biphasic T-ways, poor uh, R-way progression. This is the he, uh, blood test that have been done. Slightly low hemoglobin level, creatinine is normal, creatinine clearance 56, and risk factors well controlled. So this is the angiogram. Uh, we have fixed the right uh, three days ago. The uh, target now is a diffuse calcified LED uh, and also the circumflex and you can also see uh, evidence of distal left main uh, involvement as well. This was the RCA that has been fixed both in the proximal mid and distal. Okay, this is the Euro score and syntax score. Uh, she's very high risk because of age, poor heart function for surgery, and we are doing multi-vessel PCI, left main LED circumflex. So I'll now open this time for any comments on the case before we uh, touch on our strategy. Okay, k uh, we have uh, great panels here. So, please, uh, Jonathan, in UK, um, what sort of strategy would you use for this uh, very complex uh, uh, left main bifurcation lesion? Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's quite similar to the case we had this morning. Uh, I think the left main is slightly more complex, but elderly patient, uh, there's a lot of calcium around. So, c can you not hear? Uh, sorry. Um, um, is it go, go on. Uh, I can hear. Uh, so, an elderly patient, there's going to be a lot of calcium around. Um, and I think the lessons that we're, we're learning now is that the more information you have up front, uh, the better your decision making is regarding your form of vessel preparation. So I think a decision needs to be made here based on intravascular imaging of how you're going to uh, yeah, yeah. treat this left main. I would prefer having OCT images up front, um, image the bifurcation, um, get, get all the information, decide on your vessel prep strategy. Uh, apparently uh, this morning, uh, Shockwave has now been approved. So if Shockwave's there, you should just go ahead and use it. Mm. Um, but you may have to consider rotational atherectomy for both limbs of the uh, left main bifurcation. Okay, we get another opinion from India, Dr. Ashmi Mehta. Um, your comment? Yes, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really a complex situation. A distal bifurcation left main is always challenging. Mm. And uh, the only thing, yes, uh, imaging, and I think since it involves the left main also, mm -hmm. the eye was... Uh, perhaps maybe a little preferred modality of imagining. And um, of course, to me, it looks like that uh, the option of uh, shockwave is applicable or not that I don't know because no experience of shockwave, mm. but certainly this case cannot be done with ad adequate lesion preparation will not be possible without root ablation. That is for sure. In this case, upfront root ablation will be uh, a, a choice for lesion preparation in, uh, yeah. in India, yeah. sure. Uh, jumping in China, this is your daily case, right? It's very. Uh... Yeah, it's uh, complicated, the left mean disease. Uh, so I try to uh, treat this kind of uh, left mean uh, disease as uh, simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And I would 
I would try to uh, use, uh, I was uh, to guide the, the standard impediment, but you my, in my routine work, uh, I, I would use, I was very often, Yes, uh, the undergrad guide uh, uh, stand in payment. Yeah. If I meet some quest, uh, problem, uh, I will do I was and uh, finish this case. Mm -hmm. Okay, w while we are discussing, can Obivan put up the angiogram so that uh, we can review the angiogram as well? So can we have the last comment from my coach, uh, Dr. Munawa? What would you do in Indonesia? Yeah, I think it's, it's, uh, I feel that it's a very complex uh, situation, yeah. so this is the left main. And what we have to do, of course, uh, imaging is uh, number one. Then uh, good preparation, at least with uh, raw time, because it's uh, calcified there. And then, in this might be, you know, it's not only just rota. I usually use with either with uh, cutting balloon uh -huh. or uh, with uh, scoring balloon. It's a really complete uh, modification and that's to prevent mm. uh, side brain occlusion. That's uh, what... Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, so I'm D.W. Park from Assam Medical Center. As uh, everybody knows well, this patient is uh, one uh, typical example of the cheap patient, the complex uh, high-risk indicated PCI. This patient is the 86 old female and anatomically very complex distal main disease. Uh, as well as the main problem was uh, uh, she has a low ejection fraction, 35% of ejection fraction, and there are diverse, uh, you know, risk factor for such patients. So I, I have one, ca one question for the uh, panel is, uh, how do you do, you know, this patient ejection fraction is 35, is uh, how the panel the, do upfront IABP, or you, how do you manage the hemodynamic support for such okay. patients? So um, a poll in Taiwan, uh, what sort of um, hemodynamic support would you use, or would you use at all in this patient? Well, uh, for us, I think IBP is essential. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe some form of C, uh, CBC, PCPS could be necessary, but uh, I think uh, with an LVF of 35, I think uh, maybe we don't need hemodynamic support, maybe just IBP. But my point is that this is, uh, like everybody have discussed, this is a complex looking angiogram. But uh, anyone, thinking about doing an FFR into mm -hmm. the circumflex, because sometimes these circumf uh, circumflex lesion, even uh, how difficult it may look or ugly it may look, sometimes actually the FFR number is actually within normal range. So uh, in terms of the LAD, I agree that uh, some form of uh, lesion preparation like rotablation mm -hmm. or something more aggressive is necessary for uh, the optimal stand expansion. But for the circumflex, also considering the fragility of this patient, uh, well, I personally would do FFR on the mm -hmm. circumflex. For circumflex, yeah. So, Dr. Hayashi, in Japan, would you use uh, any mechanical support device in this patient? Uh, in my facility, uh, I can't use uh, Impera. Uh, but we, we don't. Usually, yeah, we, we don't. We don't. Uh, uh, yeah. Impera is one option. And, uh, yeah, yeah, and, uh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Prefecture. Uh, the FFR and the PCI is not covered at the same uh, time, same uh, procedure. Uh. But uh, if I can use it, FFR, uh, it's a... Mm -mm. In terms of patient selection for Impella, mm -mm. I think it, it yeah. can be helpful, uh, uh. certainly wh where, where it is, you know, it's a major cost consideration, is uh, to, to measure the left ventricular hemodynamics. It, you know, the sim a simple measurement at this point would be left ventricular end diastolic pressure. So if you've got somebody with a very high EDP, so above a, say, 15 to 20 threshold, uh, you know that the moment you start working on the left main and they get any slow flow, they will become hemodynamically compromised very quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you've got, a, let's say, an EDP here over 20 and you've got a mechanical circulatory support device available, then I would prefer to put it in up front rather than put it in under under duress when the patient yeah, is decompensated. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. It's always a bit difficult to assess which patient require this uh, support. So if there's yeah, a, yeah. a number to measure, it will be, be good. So, Kewun, without uh, safe time, just time, tell us what your plan. I'll show yeah. what the angiogram that we have done today. Mm -hmm. uh, it largely uh, is similar to what we have. You can see that uh, LED is diffusely disease. There's calcium 
and uh, this chunk of calcium in the uh, proximal LED that made wiring a little bit difficult. I had to switch out a Xeon Blue for fielder mm. wire to eventually wire the LED. Uh, this is circumflex, which we know. So difficulty was after passing that chunk of calcium, mm. further calcium was diffusely diseased. We managed to eventually wire with a hydrophilic filter wire, and this was a 2-0 balloon, some resistance to this. We did gentle pre-dilatation. Mm -hmm. Subsequently, we performed IVAS to mm -hmm. help us mm -hmm. define what strategy mm -hmm. uh, to go. So maybe we switch over to IVAS, and maybe we have Dr. Kang okay. uh, interpret the IVAS for us. Yeah, so we chose IVOS for interface crime imaging because the patient is a patient with a, a severe heart failure and OCT needs some injection and that will be not good for this patient. So we chose IVOS and this is IVOS pullback from the mid LAD. Just below the septal, the vessel is nearly normal. And you can see them there is a, I'm sorry, a little bit of myocardial uh, bridging this point and then proximally after the septal branch came in there is nearly normal vessel with just mild disease and the vessel size was about 2.6 so we chose this point as a, a distal landing zone because the disease began from the point and you can see the septal branch came in and the calcified plaque begins a very eccentric calcification and you could see the diagonal branch mm. stop here. Diagonal branch came in in six o'clock, just before the tightest calcified uh, digit point. And here you can see mm. very severe calcification even after 2.0 ballooning. And there's some breakage, but still there is some mm. uh, indentation mm. and very severe calcification. And here is the proximal LAD size 3.6. And the ostium of the circumflex mm. is coming from 4 o'clock. And just after the, the circumflex came in and this left main, after this left main, the left main itself has very mild disease mm. with a very big vessel size about 4.5. Mm. And here is the ostium of the left main. Mm. So we discussed a lot about the stenting stretchage with yeah, this yeah. IVUS finding. So whether to put the stand to where mm -hmm. and implant what, which stand. One strategy was to put stand here to cross the diagonal bifurcation and left main bifurcation to a left main shaft. Then it, was, it could be covered with 38 stand, mm -hmm. but the problem was the size discrepancy. Mm -hmm. If we put this stand, we have to put 2.5 or 2.75 stand on the disc yeah. for the mid LED, but the left main size is more than 4.0 or more. Yeah. So we discussed a lot and decided mm -hmm. to put the two stand, one for the smaller LED to proxy LED mm -hmm. here, and then treat the diagonal branch bifurcation and do all the optimization and put another stand for bigger size to for left main bifurcation mm. to cover till left main osteum. We did not evaluate the complex IVC yet, and here we uh, reach mm -hmm. the procedure. So, and uh, so I think uh, in technically, if you're gonna decide to uh, upfront two stand strategy, we have uh, some discussion point. Uh, uh, looking at this region, very acute angle, nearly 90 degree angle, which stand strategy prefer? you know, crush or TK yeah. crush or tap technique uh, or the uh, Kulo technique. And uh, there are many debate about that. And the second debatable portion, uh, if you're gonna, depending on the IBUS evaluation, uh, from the mid LED to the sharp top left main, uh, there is total length. So we can cover the 38 uh, one stand, but the size discrepancy matter. Distal uh, edge is just 2.6 or 2.7. Proximal is uh, 3.7, 3.8. There is a big discrepancy. How gonna do usually panel the meet uh, this patient uh, yes. in your yes. oh, so, okay. so, so, um, yeah. Can we get some comment from Dr. Hone about the IVAS finding? You agreed yeah. with the assessment mm -hmm. and the strategy? Okay, thank you. 
And uh, definitely the, in the mid, uh, 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 approximately, the, the, there is almost circumferential and uh, some uh, calcium are protruding into the lumen. That means uh, it, the calcium consists of a uh, calcified nodule. And so uh, definitely we need some debulking, mm. uh, like a rotobrator or uh, orbiter arthrectomy uh, is another candidate, but uh, only ablate just uh, around the tightest segment. And another point is that uh, I would like to uh, see the uh, IVAS pullback from the circumflex uh, to uh, obtain the uh, osteal uh, plaque uh, distribution and uh, characteristics. And if there is less calcium at the osteum, then we can dilate with scoring balloon or uh, uh, cutting balloon and finish with DCB. So we can avoid the two uh, student strategy. That yeah. is my point. Yeah, yeah. That is a nice. Uh, yes, nice there's very simple classification on the mid LED. And uh, I, I agree with your opinion. And to rotablate or not is the operative decision. But mm -hmm. the patient mm -hmm. is very high risk with low ejection fraction. So we must consider the patient's situation. And I agree that aggressive uh, region modification mm -hmm. is needed for this very severe classified region. OK, Kaewoon, can you show us uh, what you have done? Yeah. After wiring an IVUS, uh, we decided instead to go uh, with a two cent strategy from LED to a left main. Mm -hmm. We use a 275 non compliant by 15 balloon. This is the dilatation. Went up to pressure about 16. And this was the dilatation. So the balloon was inflated uh, relatively uh, 16 pressure and expanded fully. We felt comfortable here to uh, start stenting. So we place a stent. Uh, this is Zan's uh, 275 by 24. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, would the panelists surprised that the, uh, actually it was expanded quite well, even though the, uh, there was so much classification yeah. on, on yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. I think it, uh, w when you've got this quality of imaging, the eccentricity of the calcium, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, the, the, the stent expands in the soft part of the vessel. So you're, you're displacing the eccentric calcium. You may not be modifying it, but you're, you are displacing it. So I think balloons expand in that situation because of the distensibility of the normal vessel. Okay, so can you try to recross the diagonal? Or? There's no sound. Uh, Obi Ben? We can't hear you, Kaywoon. Have you post dilated the end of this? Have you have you got a stent yet in the left main, or are you? I think they can't hear us. Yeah. yeah. Can somebody check the sound? So now, uh, tapping okay. the left so, main so LED circumflex. Okay, got it. Sorry, Kaywoon, we lost you just now. We couldn't hear what you said, so maybe uh -huh. you just repeat what you said about. Uh, so we have dilated the uh, LED stands with a 30515 balloon. Uh, the diagonal which we protected wasn't compromised, and there was no intention initially for us to do a two stand technique okay. for the okay. diagonal. Okay. But since we moved the diagonal wire, left the LED wire, and uh, we are now pursuing the uh, left main bifurcation, trying to wire this angulated tight left main ostium now, uh, the uh, circ ostium. Have you post dilated the stent in the left main? Uh, there is no left main stent. Oh, it's not the stent oh, okay. is yeah, from uh, proximal yeah, to mid. Yeah, uh, this yeah. is the post dilatation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this is uh, you've seen the mm. post dilatation mm. images. Mm. Yeah. So and the, the size of this frequency we decided to two stand from LAD to left main. Okay. Yeah. Distal two seven five approx three point five. Yes, the, the distal stand was just placed uh, at the uh, uh. the proximal LAD, just proximal to the very tight calcified region, mm. but before uh, left main bifurcation. Sure. I think the uh, the cirque lesion is a bit eccentric, so yeah, yeah. it be a little bit difficult to, uh, yeah, to yeah. wire. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes, it's a very acute angle. I think a sasu sasuke here is extremely helpful, or it's some dual dual lumen catheter, uh, yeah, and you yeah. get it that positioned in there, and the rewiring then almost is yeah, instant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we are pulling out a crochet arm, double lumen catheter. Mm, 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 mm. Um, the, the problem with this uh, LED is that the, um, the, the, the discrepancy between left main and the LED, the cert is quite big. 
So, uh, Kwan, uh, in for your, your experience, would you use one stand or would you use two stands that actually to, in order to match the, uh, the, the diameter? Uh, actually, in our center, we have a taper stand uh, and uh, we, uh, we have uh, quite experience for put a long stand like a 3035 mm. and then we can cover from the uh, left main and uh, into the mid LED mm. because actually the mid LED can take over like a 3-0. Mm. Then the postman part of the stand can up into the 4-0 by the balloon. So uh, if the cost is issue and then we win, use only one stand mm -hmm. paper from left main to the mid LED. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you really want to have a um, perfect result and then I, I think the strategy here is perfect because we need the uh, three stand. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned the taper drug learning stand, right? Uh, the, the taper stand. Yeah, taper yeah. stand. <laughs> that is drug which, which the stand name, what is stand name? Uh, Scope. Biomine. Biomine, yeah. Biomine, yeah. Bio 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 from, yeah, from yeah. India. Bio yeah. uh, from India, okay. The other thing but is whether you I could I use a uh, dentist. Can I say something, Aaron? Yes, yes. Say about okay, yeah, yeah. tapered stand, uh, I have one reservation. That if you're going to post okay, dilate every stand, then this tapered, tapered uh, property has no meaning uh -huh. because uh, it is no more tapered because that will be the what final balloon dilatation gives the shape. That's the shape. So I, I don't think. The, uh, the other issue is that about... Uh, the issue about FFR in circumflex. It is very true mm. that when you do FFR in circumflex and you find sometimes even a flow limiting obstruction which you eyeball, uh, and yet the FFR is reasonably good. But here the territory is very large. I don't think that the FFR would be normal here. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Yes. I, I have one more comment about the FFR measurement for circumflex ostium. FFR can be negative for this region, but you yeah. must think that after crossover, the left main, if the left main, uh, if the circumflex is shared, the tetra is really big, and this kind of patient with low EF, then that will be very big damage for this patient. So in this case, I think the, uh, this part of the FFR value then the, the provisional, uh, the, no, 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 upfront two stand technique or two stand strategy for circumflex opening is necessary for this kind of patient. Well, well Dr. Kang, uh, it's Paul out here. I, I disagree with your comment yeah. because uh, we know that once you have sent across the circ ostium, it's yeah. difficult to put in the pressure wire, of course. So, yeah. so but now in our practice, in our practice, actually, we had a pressure wire in the circumflex from the beginning. And when we stand across the circ osteo, we mm -hmm. take the circ FFR reading immediately. We don't have to recross. And then if the number is okay, we just pull it out. If the number is not okay, we leave the pressure wire as a landmark and then send in another wire and then finish it with the bifurcational technique. So sending an FFR after standing across the circumflex osteum is never a problem. Mm. Yeah. And you decide to okay, use FFR right. on the basis of the FFR evaluation of the circ osteum. Right. So you've seen how the Crusade uh, new lumen catheter have assisted the uh, wiring of the circumflex. Yeah, yeah, very now nice. we're using the flush technique to maintain wire position. If the camera can uh, focus on uh, Prof Sutik's hands, he, he's taking a small syringe mm. and by flushing, maintaining okay. wire okay. position. Okay, okay got so it. I continue to flush and then you just use mm, it. Mm, yeah. mm. Obviously, this technique is not 100% successful. Sometimes, not careful, you will lose the wire. So if it's very difficult wiring, I will be a bit more secure to just yeah, use a trapping yeah. balloon to take it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, Sutek is very experienced. He's 10 injection, but it's yeah. very powerful. Yeah. yeah. No, no, I think we thought we just showed different techniques. I think that it's really good. Yeah. If it's six French, then mm -hmm. uh, we need a non -com and all these. Mm -hmm. Non-compliant. Yeah. Two seven five, two seven five billion. So, sorry. Um, so now we have re rewired the uh, circumflex. Now we're dealing with the circumflex LED LFA mm, bifurcation. Mm, we are mm. going to pre-dilate the circumflex and then do IVUS before Evaluate, we decide on uh, the strategy yeah, for yeah, the it's good. sensing. Yeah. So, and uh, looking at uh, this uh, uh, wide angle, or how do you think about uh, what is best uh, uh, two-stand strategy? Is panel, is TK crush or tab or color? Okay, can we have um, uh, Kamaraj from in Malaysia? What sort of standing technique you have? Um, Looking at the angle is very acute. The, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, uh, we needed quite a bit of effort to get the wire in. So 
Um, wow, it's good. Okay, let's see how the balloon goes down. Yeah, nearly 90 degree angle. Ooh. Oh. Okay, first thing I would first do an IVUS. We need to see what really is happening down there. Whether we really need to stent in the first place. I agree with okay. Dr. Junko. But it's, it's too late, already dilated. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, they wanted to dilate it because they wanted to put in the IVUS. Yeah. This is a 2.75 two, two yeah, NC balloon. Yeah. Okay, good. I think it's fine for I both was. TAP and, uh, uh -huh. and DK Crush. I mean, it's um, their preference. Mm -hmm. Hayashi? Uh, I have no experience with the DK Crush, but uh, in this case, I, I do the, the sequence, please, uh, for circumflex osteum and the single cent KBD. Uh. You you do uh, the the second second place yeah, based on the angulation and, and diameter of the vessel. <laughs> we I will choose uh, DK crash for this kind of situation. Yeah, actually our favor DK crash yeah. given that it's more difficult to find. I like DK crash, but I mean it's with uh, very angulation like this. I do believe that in the future in stent rates there is quite uh, high. Um, from the other side, uh, uh, jumping. DK crash, right? From China. No need to say, yeah. <laughs> Doctor, uh, <laughs> doc uh, sorry, uh, jumping. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's hard to uh, say that the yeah, uh, DK no crash more. is uh, Chinese style, maybe. Okay, good. But uh, uh, I usually but, uh, I, I will follow the. Uh, I will uh, try the crossover first, yeah. and, the, and the depend on the fi uh, final results. If the uh, circumflex was uh, compromised, from the, I would the change. From the I never used a DK crush before. Wow, it's good. Paul, now we committed to stand. <laughs> Yeah, I'm too oh, late. Uh, too late. Uh, 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 but I think with this uh, uh, angulation, I think maybe a tap. Maybe a tap. Okay. Uh, Dr. Meta? Uh, I, I think the, the data shows that the, uh, the DK crush has the lowest side branch restenosis rate. And it's uh, feasible to be able to do a DK crush in this kind of a case. I, I'll prefer DK crush over tap. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Honey? I think uh, the top technique, yeah, if the uh, the region cannot be finished with the, uh, the scoring and the CD, then I would do the tap. Mm. Uh, Dr. Uh, Okazaki, from mm. your preference uh, bifurcation mm. technique? No, but uh, this patient is uh, 83 years old. Yep. Uh, uh, we need to hesitate uh, complex stenting. Maybe I perform the circumflex. Uh, I completely agree the FFR for uh, evaluating the circumflex uh, ischemia. Uh, if there is a, a typical ischemia, I perform the uh, debulk and the squaring uh, followed by the drug coating balloon. Yeah. This is not as the side branch. I, I, I think in this way, when we uh, wiring the L6 is uh, yeah, yeah. typical, so uh, I hesitate to, to make a complex technique, so I prefer like a Q-Lot, because I need to protect the entry of the L6, uh -huh. so maybe the Q-Lot is, is my choice at this Why? point. Yeah, yeah, I, actually, I my preference is Q-Lot as well, because if you have TK crash, it's it's already difficult to cross a circle, so maybe difficult to cross a strand. But my preference would be to pull bar the uh, circle first. If it looks good, maybe just DEB it and then send across it to avoid a very complex. Uh. So, uh, uh, Kwon, most panelists uh, is TK crush. Um, so, what is your uh, preference for nice. this uh, nice. uh, patient? Excellent. I think we try to keep it simple. Uh, uh. The options of DK crush have been discussed, but uh, uh. the tap would certainly be a more simpler, straightforward yeah, yeah. option yeah, for this. Yeah. So we will probably go with circum uh, the uh, tap after standing left main LED. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 And can you can you please? So uh, if uh, everybody's agreeable, okay. oh. I, I, I think I've I've changed my mind. I think the okay. the comments about. The, the ease of with drug eluting balloons here, maybe a little bit more modification mm -hmm. of the circumflex ostium, perhaps with a cutting mm -hmm. balloon or a score flex, then a drug eluting balloon, and then have a simple stent from left main to LED. She, she, I think she's 80, 80 years. Yeah. Old? Yeah, yeah. So we don't need to get a perfect result. So yeah. maybe score, score flex okay. and so drug eluting balloon, and then single stent.
uh, okay. here's Ivers from the circumflex, and here's just the okay. could you Could you, could you the interpret uh, Ivers' finding? Yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. Uh, uh, because the first wiring was up to the, uh, into the OM branch, mm. so this is the uh, pullback from the OM, and this is the bifurcation. Uh, we can't see the Ivers. OM uh, and circumflex. Change uh, or Ivers, bang. Yeah. Ivers, yeah. Just. Uh, okay, just we see the Ivers now. The yeah. okay. OM and circumflex bifurcation. There's a nearly normal, or uh, just, just mild, uh, digit, just mild digits. Region passive size 3.5 and lumen size just 3.1. And here, there's the few digits, but intermediate stenosis of the circumflex. And at the just ostium, there's very calcified digits mm -mm -mm. constricting the circumflex and adjacent to the left main. So, oh, very complex uh, anatomy, but it's because it's the, after the main uh, ballooning, there's some calcium and dissections, and there is some hematoma and dissection of the left main. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, I think you, it's better to hurry the procedure. And for the circumflex osteum, there's very tight stenosis with the calcification. No, but uh, you did surprise us just now. The 2 O balloon did open nicely. Mm. So yeah. maybe we can surprise us again. Yeah. yeah, we'll continue the surprise and winning streak. Shall we just stand left yeah, 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 LED yeah. as well? Yeah. yeah. Then, so which technique it, could will you, could you use? check the angiogram again? There was some yeah. hematoma, and uh, we can. Go to, yes. Uh, Aliocranial. Uh, uh. Yeah, yeah. As a pre. Or maybe it's both cranial. Both yeah, okay, okay, got it. If the hematoma extends to the main, we require to the, the full recover of the main, okay. Mm -hmm. So, Jonathan, with the Ivers finding, would you, would you still persist with this uh, DEB yeah. thing, or you think uh, that? I think uh, I'd want I'd want some more modification. More modification. Okay. Um, okay. Um, uh, with whatever uh, tools uh, available. Uh, Left, it's uh, the, the dissection hematoma is on the LAD side, not uh, circumflex side. So three five is out of it. Yeah, three five, yeah, three, five, 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 five four, three four, LAD to left main stand. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, I, I think we should avoid any further yeah, injection three, five, from now on. Uh, any contrast injection. Um, Kaewon, the panel we're suggesting that to avoid uh, integrate injection, to avoid uh, extension of the uh, hematoma. Yeah. yeah, so we're going to secure that part by mm -hmm. doing left main to mm -hmm. LED stenting. Mm -hmm. We'll be using a 3, 5 mm -hmm. by 23 yeah, stent, yeah. overlapping with the LED stent. Mm -hmm. I think it's very obvious on the LEO cranial view. Can Obi yeah. put the uh, LEO cranial view on the main screen? Yeah. Is your guide side hold? No. Uh, so far, we have been removing the uh, guide every mm. time we have an injection. Pressure does drop. Pressure doesn't damn very much, but pressure does drop. So we're coming up with the stents. And we're going to be uh, placing the uh, stem position mm -hmm. in the aleocranial to make sure we nail the ostium. Sometimes this uh, hematoma actually can travel. Um, so it may go to the circ. I mean, LED have a stent there, so it may not go to LED. But I have a case where the hematoma actually travel from the LED to left main, left main to the to the circ. Yeah. So I have to be mindful. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Overlap. Okay. Deflating. Yeah, inflate, no, it's a, go ahead, yeah, inflate. Mm -mm. Okay, quick, curb, curb, okay. My usual practice is to do an injection after mm. you deployed it to check for the, uh, make sure that you cover the ostium here. Mm. When the balloon is up, so that you can see where it ends. Yeah. Yeah, let's maybe just flare up the ostium. Yeah, yeah, 14, yeah, it's good. Okay, yeah. okay great. Uh -uh. Take a 
Okay, good. Okay, great. So um, at this point, you have to be careful with the uh, guide because you see have one wire trapped mm -hmm. underneath the stand strut, so it should not be pushing too far in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, does it look, the hematoma looks like it's, uh, it's uh, disappeared. There's still one area which is not very well dilated on the angiogram. Yep. Near the... Uh, so we're going to use a high-pressure balloon yeah, to optimize yeah. the stents. Yes, yeah. good. So we use a 4-0 short yeah. NC balloon. 4-0 yeah. short four NC balloon. Four yeah, 4 mm -hmm. The main vessel size is about 4.4. Oh, so 4.0 four four. Four yeah. with very high-pressure balloon will be yeah. safe. But in the LAD, the vessel size is about 3.5. So do not uh, of, um, too much dilate the LAD. Sure. So, and uh, we are definitely to see the IBUS uh, guided measurement, and uh, we can definitely decide to uh, NC balloon size on yeah. the basis of uh, IBUS. Maybe we do the caudal uh, injection also. Caudal view. Where do you go, sir? Um. <laughs> we, why, why, don't we, why don't we wait? Let's do a caudal injection as well. Mm -hmm. Caudal injection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for ten open. Both caught. We want to see what's happened to the circumflex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually you got a hint from the alleo cranial as well. Mm. Good. That's good. Um anybody want to FFR at this stage? <laughs> I think the left main stenting is very nice. So, and uh, we already uh, inflate the uh, suck ostium and the, there is some very uh, severe calcium crack yeah. and we require two stent. I think the lumen of the osteocerc looks pretty acceptable. I think just a little bit of bigger balloon to a gentle inflation, we probably can just get away with the provisional. Uh, Dr. Hayashi, you have something uh, to comment? According to the relationship, the guiding uh, tip, the location of the tip, uh, tip of the guiding cluster, and, uh, mm, I think the, the stent uh, didn't cover the osteum of the LMC. Oh, um, so I want to check the IBUS. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're going to do a pot here at okay. first. So, so after IBUS, uh, we can uh, post the radiation of the osteum of the LMC. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was first. Okay, gentle, oh. gentle, and we yeah. overlap a little bit here. Maybe a 12 here. 12 here. Yeah. Yeah. Down. Go higher. From PLC, the main basic size was yeah, very yeah. large, more than 4.2. High pressure so balloon. So 4.0 balloon and applying very high pressure left main. So I, I, I have a, you know, practical the question to the panel and this patient is HBR one of HBR high risk patient, yeah. high breathing risk patient, uh, 84 year old woman and uh, uh, BMI was low and uh, we're gonna plan to two stand strategy for distal and main. So how about the depth duration? Mm. Is uh, uh, any opinion from the panel? Dr. Furman, the depth duration for this patient? Is HBR the, because and because complex 83 high yeah. female no, and very, very uh, high finding. breathing rate, so it, it depends. But, uh, I agree that maybe I change my strategy right now because it looks like the osteal circuit is not that bad. Maybe you by, by putting the EB in that time and then doing final kissing, is, uh, I'll be, you know, I will finish the procedure. And the depth, depth I think, is maybe uh, six months, maybe? Not more than that because considering she's uh, 83 years old. Yeah, you should have used six Onyx. Yeah. You could have gone for one month. Mm. If you have used Onyx, then we could have gone for one month. Even though, and the, you, you want to put the onyx stand, the uh, distal bifurcation complex region, you just keep the one month step? I, th I think it's pretty clear now, all of the latest generation uh, stents, uh, they're all, whether it's with a PVDF polymer or a biodegradable polymer, that the re-endothelialization is you know, predominantly complete mm -hmm. by one month. Um, if, if there's a suspicion if somebody's going to have delayed re-endothelialization, then maybe prolong it, but I think one month is fine now. Again, we're taking the uh, Crusade Dual Lumen catheter to try to assist us in rewiring. Mm -hmm. We're taking the third wire. Put it, put it, put it. Okay. 
Okay. So there was difficulties wiring mm -hmm. before the stand. Now with the stand, I think the mm -hmm. difficulties even more. I think yeah. So I would have sort of dilated a bit more for the circ. Now if it's we can't cross with mm. the wire, maybe we can just do it with a provisional without without casing. Yeah. But I think with the, with the dual, these dual lumen casters, um, you know, it does make it easier to to do this rewiring. Mm, okay. Wow. Just advance your dual lumen caster a little bit. Just to strengthen it. Uh, which wire are you using? Uh, as a what cable? What? Uh, at the moment, Xiaomi blue. Xiaomi blue wire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this sort of difficult case, I usually use a hydrophilic fielder. Okay. Uh, oh, great. well done. Well done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great, great. Very nice. This uh, very wide angle, you know, double lumen caster yeah. is a good yeah. option. Another the strategies inverted U, the Y technique yeah. sometimes used. Uh. Sure. You're gonna flush out the uh, mm -hmm. dual lumen caster. You must be careful not to touch the 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 proximal tip of the stand. Mm -hmm. It can be damaged by guiding cutters. So take, show us show us your powerful injection again. Yeah. So oh, I hope the wire doesn't <laughs> come out, eh? Okay. <laughs> powerful injection. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so take so a wire after that. The key point is, uh, uh, instead of the whole hand, yeah, he's uh, holding the two uh, wires, uh, uh, uh. okay, until he meets the resistance, uh, 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 okay? So I continue to, uh, uh. I continue to flush, and uh, he will uh, uh, be moving uh. like the uh, uh, rapid exchange guide wire, right? We can also do this as a single man uh, operator. Okay. <laughs> so we, it's a two. Yeah. Well done, Sutek. I think it's, I never I use that. Yeah, yeah, usually, yeah. Require usually with the trapping balloon. I think yeah. a small size a balloon. Two, two and balloon. Then, yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. Two. We had two, a two or yeah. two zero. Yeah. So we're taking a two balloon. Yeah, we have yeah. the circumflex trap wire as yeah, an additional yeah. support that we use. Okay, got it. We had a four. Yeah, you uh, already we do four point zero NC field. balloon, field. and then field. And field. The, yeah, we finally we just a uh, kissing balloon implantation would be okay. So we need a tree uh -huh. the Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a uh, tool, but two this o. is a used tool. Wow. Okay. A used to o uh, is uh, no, having no, challenge. Hip, hip, uh, angle is acute, and I think there's some new one. Or Maybe a one five. Yeah, one five. Well, one five. One five. Okay. Smaller balloon may help. One. Yeah. one five new one. The other options is to post dilate the stent a little bit more, so to. Yeah, we've used a four o short balloon, and uh, Grand High at the carina to optimize the rewiring. So, so you're planning to do a, uh, a kiss a at the end? Or a to complete initially was I a see. tap. Uh, but looking tap angiographically, yeah, yeah. would anybody suggest maybe FFR, DB to finish? Yep, agreed. But uh, so I think, uh, you know, this is very complex, this time true by application region. And we cannot make sure good result just using uh, balloon angioplastic type. And uh, you're going to do drug luring balloon, you're going to do NC balloon, and uh, there would be some severe dissection and narrow the LCX oxygen. I think uh, definitely, uh, you know, risk stenosis is but very often. Yeah. yeah, so the region I we require yes, upfront to, yeah. to stand technique would be better for right. such complex region. Okay, down. There's a 1.5 balloon, mm -hmm. uh, just a little bit of resistance going across okay, the angulated good. lesion. 16 again. Okay, nice. Yeah, 16. Ah, okay, we, we have to remember that um, the the length from the circumference uh, to the high OM risk. branch bifurcation was 10. Almost uh, 16. Uh, okay, good. So yeah. we did not assess the proper circumflex yeah. in previous divers. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was 3.25. Go with two O oh, now again. Yeah. Yeah. To use the additional balloon and then the put the stand. Nice. Go with the two O. Oh. The two angulation, point. I think, is going to be a bit. So, so Kwon, you you plan to do a tap? 
Uh, initially a tap, but uh, anybody has, um, yeah, we all talk about high bleeding risk, whether uh, at this age, uh, high bleeding risk, the uh, need really for uh, bifurcation stenting, uh, but the plan was for a tap to finish off. So any comment from the... I think it's going to be hard to get a, a stent round. Then, yeah. So I think, you know, just a bit more post-dilatation. Okay, here, great. The Wonderful. So and this was a use 2O balloon. 2O two, two balloon. And okay. then finish off with a drug eluting balloon and then okay. we'll be done. Okay, done. Drug eluting balloon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the LED wire is coming back. Yeah. yeah. An option is actually put in a guard extension catheter. This one is 8.5, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we will be able to tell. But uh, let's see. We, we can't hear you very well, Sutek. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have a mic, sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, the LD wire, I have to push down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when the circumflex first wire removed, because uh, there's, there's a possibility of the deformation mm. of the circum, uh, sort of MCA sustained because the, the wire, first wire, yeah, the yeah, side of the yeah, wire. it's a pull back the go first. Okay. Yeah. Maybe go to aliocranial or, or aerocranial first. That's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So the so, so suggestion is actually now for the uh, trap wire to to remove. Mm -hmm. Yes. So would the panel actually suggest that we remove the trap wire or use it as a support to deliver the uh, stents? Three point. Three point. Three point. Three point. Three point. Three point two five by ten millimeter till bifurcation, uh, but we did not evaluate. Three point two five. Three point two five. Um. Actually, most of us actually. Yes, that, um, yes. 3 is okay. uh, probably do a provisional yeah, yeah, yeah. if the um, osteocirc looks uh, reasonable. Uh, uh, uh. So yeah, then a uh, DEB uh, only? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it can cross, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, yeah. 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 Having a mini conference, yeah? No, no, too much short. Uh, but uh, Kaewoon is, is your call, so we are just watching. Don't want to cross the yeah. OB. Yeah. Um, 12, 12. If you don't want to cross the OM, 8 is better. Yeah. Okay, we're, you... we're going for a stance. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. No, we'll leave the OM. We have about, actually yeah, we yeah. finished, uh, session almost OM, finished. Huh? Uh, uh, so, um, yeah. let's open this one. Three OM. Uh, yeah. Let us know what your decision okay. is. Yeah. We are we're doing a short stand. We have a tap. We are taking a three O stands, uh, length by 13 or by 8. Yeah. This is an osteo stenting. Minimal protrusion. Okay. Okay, okay. So we will stay until you do the sure. tracing. I think it will be interesting to see. Uh, yeah. How easy the stand delivers. Uh, 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 uh. I probably would use a bigger balloon to dilate the um, the stand struts first before we try the balloon. You only use two O, right? Yeah, two. Yeah, o. and it have some difficulties crossing the the ostium. Can I have some yeah. faith? We try. We try. Your your skill is good. Yeah. My my, my toes are crossed. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, great. Okay, wonderful. I think that is the uh, most uh, critical point, and uh, you know, tap technique exactly A -P -A -P minimal, uh, yeah, minimal yeah. protrusion is the essential part. To you know, tap technique, uh, the, the, the technical one, concern yeah. is uh, yeah. to make sure the short the uh, uh, nail carina. You need a balloon be, in the left main, right? Sorry. 
and don't forget to remove the wire. Yes, don't remove the wrong one. <laughs> Thank you. Just uh, uh, <laughs> remove the wire. Yeah. Right? And then usually, and the people, the tap technique, we put the another NC balloon in the LED part, and then make sure, yeah, yeah. LED is uh, 3.5 or 3, yeah. We had a 3 O N C. Three O N C. Yeah, three O N C is good. Yeah. Mm -mm. For LED. And the uh, random market uh, uh, Prox LED lamp main, and then the match the uh, circle ostium stand, and then the inflate would be uh, much easier to perform the tap technique. I think you have to find an angle that actually can see the perfection uh, uh, well. Maybe you can center the cord. Okay, good. So Excellent. AP cordal is currently what you have here. Maybe you can stand boost to uh, 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 try to identify. Can mm. collar mate and stand boost. Mm -mm. Let's go this door and come back later easier. There are too many markers there with the pacing lead. Uh, uh, uh. Stand boost will not work. Try. Okay, ready? A little bit back. Yeah. Okay. I think so a little bit one back. One dot back. Uh, which stand is this? Because some it's stands giant are... giant stand. Sierra. 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 Because Sierra, Sierra is actually crimped right on the balloon marker. Some stands are crimped within the balloon marker. So that it's makes on the a marker. difference. This is yeah, on it's the right on the marker, yeah. But some stands are within, so... Okay. Uh, it's either okay, or, okay, okay, or okay, nothing. Okay, yeah. okay. One more time. One more time. Looks okay. Yeah, looks all right. Yeah, yeah we'll be I think deploying looks, here. Yeah, looks okay. Yeah. Okay. Looks okay. Okay, great. Six, eight. And terrible. With 16. Yeah. Okay, great. Come back a little bit. Wonderful. Yeah, so at this moment, and uh, we just do a uh, final kissing balloon over here, and uh, sometimes we do NC, NC, NC LAD, and the NC the suck, and the. I think uh, you know just uh, uh, I, I yeah the yeah the, 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 the uh, the yeah LED yeah the LED. The high, high. high okay, okay. okay. deflate yeah. okay. and then so final kissing yeah. and final angel would be okay yeah. okay great yeah. okay wonderful yeah one, one two three okay yeah. okay good so in the uh, technical viewpoint, the tab is the most, most uh, one of the easiest uh, you know, procedure. Yeah, simple and uh, easy to perform, much easier than the DK crush. Kaewoon and uh, Sutit, we are all the panelists are speechless of, at your skill of uh, performing this case. Uh, so unfortunately, um, um, can you show us the final angel? Okay, got it. And then we will leave, yeah. we, we have to leave you because so the next session is going to start soon. So I, I, I think, uh, yeah, final yeah, fi final. Okay, the, okay, angel over here, the limited time. It's good. Some uh, spasm yeah, at some the end of yep. the uh, this part, yeah. 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 But Looks we'll great. give some nitro and yeah, yeah. see whether that okay. goes away. So, uh, Kaewoon and uh, Sutek, very, very impressive case. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a lot of uh, educational uh, yeah, yeah. points. So, I'd like to thank all the panelists uh, yeah. um, uh, for giving a very valuable yeah. right, uh, right. opinions and uh, yeah. expert opinion. Okay. Yeah. Thank and you. I, I, uh, I'd like to close this session. Special guest. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Great.